thanks for watching, and today I will introduce you to the holy grail of differentiation rules, the one that will allow you to differentiate pretty much any function you want. And for this, let me motivate this a little bit. Let's try to calculate the derivative of sine of x squared. Okay, now let's think about this for a little bit. Let's see what rules that we know so far we can apply to this. Can we apply the product rule to this? Probably not, because it's not a product of two things. Could we apply the quotient rule to this? Also probably not, because it's not really a quotient of two functions. So, um, instead, we will need, since we ran out of rules, we will need a new rule. And also let me motivate this a little bit more. So here's an important observation. Because it's not a product of two things, it's not a quotient, but on the other hand, notice this function sine of x squared, it's the composition of two functions. Namely, sine of x squared is of the form f of g of x. What are f and what are g? f is the outer function sine of x. is sine of x, and g of x is x squared. And in fact, you can check that f of g of x, that's sine of g of x, and that's sine of x squared. And in particular, the rule I will state very soon allows you really to differentiate composition of two functions, which is great because most functions we'll see in real life are compositions of functions. So without further ado, let me state the chain rule, or as I like to call it, the chain loop. All that it says is that to differentiate the composition, so, f composed with g prime, you first differentiate the outside function, so f prime, but not f prime of x, but f prime of g of x, and then you differentiate the inside function, so times g prime of x. And this is the rule, we'll do a bunch of examples soon, but I just want to tell you the way I think about the chain rule is like cracking a walnut. In other words, how do you eat a walnut? You first crack the outer shell, which is F prime, and leave the inside intact, and then you eat the inside walnut. And this is kind of the analog of the chain rule. And by the way, why is it called the chain rule? Because you're really taking a chain of derivatives. You're multiplying two derivatives together in some sense. So in this case, before I continue, let's actually do this example. So what is sine of x squared prime? So here, as I said, f is sine of x, g is x squared. So what we get and just to remind you, f of x is sine of x. So f prime of x, it's cosine of x. g of x is x squared. And so g prime of x, that's 2x. Therefore, what do we get? We get that, that derivative, so sine of x squared prime is the following one. So, sine of x squared prime, again, with this, which is f of g of x prime, what this becomes is, again, f prime of g of x, but f prime is cosine of x, so you do cosine, again, derivative of the outside function, 
but not cosine of x, but cosine of x squared, and then you differentiate g. So in other words, you take cosine of x squared, and then you differentiate this x squared to get 2x. And again, that is the chain rule. You first differentiate the outside function while leaving the inside intact, and then you differentiate the inside function. Okay, and now let's do a couple more examples because the best way really to do the chain rule or the chain rule is to do just practice, practice, practice. So let's try to calculate now the derivative of x cubed minus 1 to the fourth. All right, so now we need to figure out what the outside function is and the inside function is. Well, notice the outside function, it's the fourth power function. Because what do you do to x cubed minus 1? You raise it to the fourth power. So f of x becomes x to the fourth. And the derivative of this, it's 4x cubed. And g of x, the inside function, is an x cubed minus 1. And the derivative of this, it's 3x squared. Now, what is that derivative then? So again, then the derivative of x cubed minus 1 to the fourth power is then as follows. As I said, you differentiate the outside function which is stuff to the fourth, which becomes, again, four something cubed. So again, that's f of g prime, so that becomes f prime. But again, not f prime of x, but f prime of the inside function, g of x. And then times the derivative of the inside function, which becomes 3x squared. If you want, you can just simplify this to become, um, I think, 12x squared, and then x cubed minus 1, and then cube. All right, of course, here I use the formula, but the good news is the more practice you do again, the more you notice you don't even need to use the formula. If you just recognize that, you have to differentiate the outside function and then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So let's do another example of this. Example 3. Let's calculate the derivative of square root of x squared plus 1 prime. And again, you need to figure out what the outside function is and what the inside function is. Well, notice kind of the shell here of the walnut is the square root part. So you first differentiate square root, which becomes 1 over 2 square root. But not square root of x, but square root of x squared plus 1. And then you differentiate the x squared plus 1 to get 2x. And you get x over square root of x squared plus 1. And of course, the thing about the chain rule or the chain rule is once you do it once, you want to do it twice or thrice. So let's do the following example. Uh, let's do sine of tan of e to the x. One, two, three, prime. And again, think of it as you differentiate the outside function first. So you do cosine of inside, which is tangent of e to the x. 
times the derivative of tangent of e to the x, which becomes cosine of tangent of e to the x, times the derivative of what? The outside function now is tangent, whose derivative is secant squared, secant squared, but the inside function is e to the x. And lastly, times the derivative of the inside function and the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So we get cosine of tangent of e to the x times secant squared of e to the x times e to the x. And lastly, um, let's do my favorite example, which I like to call the Mona e to the x Lisa, um, which is one of my favorite derivatives. So let's calculate the derivative of e to the e to the e to the x. All right. And again, notice it's a nested derivative like the previous one. So first you differentiate e, which becomes e to the e to the x. And then you differentiate the inside function, which is e to the e to the x prime. And then again, the outside function is e to the x, whose derivative is e to the x. So we get e to the e to the e to the x. No, sorry, ah, this thing here, e to the e to the x. And lastly, times the derivative of the inside function, which is e to the x, and you end up with e to the e to the e to the x, e to the e to the x times e to the x. I mean, how pretty is that? It's a tower of e to the x's. Almost like an Illuminati or something. Um, all right, and last but not least, what I want to say, so there is some alternate notation about this, and I really like this because at the end I can give you a very nice intuition about why the Chen Lu must be true. So let's go back to our original example. So alternate notation. So again, let's go back to our function sine of x squared. Well, notice, of course, y in this case, again, y is sine of x squared, y is a function of x. But you could also say, look, y is sine of x squared. So y is actually also a function of x squared. So to make this more precise, um, let you be the inside argument. So let u be x squared, then uh, y is also sine of u. And now, that's kind of interesting, because on the one hand, y is sine of x squared, and y is sine of u. But then the question is, in that case, what is y prime? Because now, notice there are two different ways of interpreting y prime. y prime could be the derivative of this with respect to x, but y prime could also be the derivative of this with respect to u, which are two different things. And the question is, how are those two notions related? And the beautiful thing is, they're related by the chain loop. Because again, there are two different ways of having the derivative of y. On the one hand, we have dy over dx, which is just the derivative of sine of x squared with respect to x, the one thing we calculated at the beginning. On the other hand, we have dy over du, which is simply the derivative of sine of u with respect to u, which is cosine of u. 
and if you want, which is cosine of x squared. Now, what does the chain rule say? It says both of those are related because notice, the chain rule, from the very beginning, we found that the derivative of sine of x squared becomes cosine of x squared times 2x. So you differentiate the outside function times the derivative of the inside function. But this thing, all that this is, it's dy over dx. This is what we found right now. It's dy over du. And now I'd like to remind you, u was x squared. So what is 2x? It's nothing else than du over dx. So another way of stating the chain rule is as follows. So I like to call it also the chain rule. Um, dy over dx, it's dy over du times du over dx. So here's a beautiful thing. The chain rule is nothing else than a ca cancellation. In other words, if you cancel out du in this equation, you get dy over dx. And in fact, if you're curious about the proof of the chain rule, it's, I've made a video of this before, but um, it's more or less just a cancellation. You just have to be slightly worried about stuff being zero or whatnot. And last but not least, as promised, using that, I can give you a very beautiful intuition behind the chain rule. In particular, why do you multiply both things like that? And I, I, I didn't invent this, this was from Mass Stack Exchange, but it's very cool. So suppose, think of this in terms of velocities. Suppose you have three things. On the one hand, suppose you have Usain Bolt, it's called UB, and a very fast person, okay? And suppose Usain Bolt runs twice as fast, fast as a train, okay? And the train, which is three times as fast as a horse. The question is, how much faster is using Bolt compared to the horse? So how fast, how much faster? is using both compared to the horse. Well, I hope that you say six times that fast because Usain Bolt runs twice as fast as a train, which is three times as fast as a horse, so uh, two, uh, two times three, which is six. Answer is six, which is two times three. And in fact, you may not realize that, but implicitly, you have used the chain rule. And this is why the chain rule is actually so intuitive. So if you want, just to elucidate this, mathematically speaking, let y be use this using Bolt, uh, u be the train, and x be the horse, then the chain rule just says dy over dx, it's dy over du times du over dx, 
But what is dy over dx? Well, it's the speed of Usain Bolt compared to the horse. So Usain Bolt versus horse. dy over du is the speed of Usain Bolt compared to the train. And du over dx is just the speed of the train compared to the horse. And that's why if you want to figure out the speed of using Bolt compared to the horse, you multiply this number, which we know is 2, by this number, which is 3, and which is six, which ends up being 6. And again, I really like this example because, again, it emphasizes that y could depend on the variable x, which is, again, the speed of ub versus the horse, but it could also depend on u, which is the speed of ub versus the train. And again, the Chen Lu says those two things are related. All right, I hope you like this little chain rule extravaganza. If you want to know more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.